Are you tired of having less than crispy photos? Do you wish your images were more sharp? Have we got a treat for you. While there are a lot of different ways to sharpen your photos, we're gonna show you a free way using Sharpener Pro 3 from the Nick Collection. If you don't already have the Nick Collection, you can get it for free from Google at google.com slash Nick Collection. While you can use Lightroom's built-in sharpener, it certainly isn't the best. So using Sharpener Pro 3 is definitely one of the better options and it's completely free. Anyways, once you have it installed, you can use it in Lightroom, Photoshop, or just as a standalone program. Today, I'll show you how to incorporate it into your Lightroom workflow. One thing I should mention is that you shouldn't use sharpening to try and fix an out of focus image. You still have to nail your focus in camera. This will just give your image that final crispness. In Lightroom, you can just right click, select edit in, and choose the output sharpener. But since we're working with an output sharpener, this will be one of our last steps in post processing. And you want your image sized correctly before you sharpen it. Once I'm done with all of my Lightroom adjustments, I'm going to export it at the exact resolution I need for where it will end up. If you're printing it, you'll want different settings than if you were posting it to Instagram, for example. In this case, we'll pretend I'm putting it in an online portfolio where the recommended width is 2000 pixels. I'll check, add to this catalog, name it, make it a TIFF with sRGB color space. For image sizing, I'll make the long edge 2000 pixels. I'll turn off output sharpening and in the post-processing section, I'll change after export to open in other application. I'll then navigate to the Nick Collection folder in applications and then choose Sharpener Pro 3 Output Sharpener. Next, I'll hit export. Now it's automatically loaded the image into Sharpener Pro 3 and applied the default sharpening. Let's zoom into 100% so we can take a look at what exactly it's doing. If we choose a split preview option up here, we can drag this bar across our image to see the sharpening take effect. Now I wanna quickly go over each of these sliders so you can make your own adjustments. The adaptive sharpening slider controls the amount of sharpening applied to the entire image. I'll leave it set to 50% for now. The output sharpening strength adjusts the opacity of that adaptive sharpening. The structure controls the fine details and textures of the image. Local contrast adjusts the contrast in the edges of small objects of the image. So if we crank it up all the way, you can just see how crazy we can get with it. The focus slider gives you a little more control of how the adaptive sharpening affects the finer details of your photo. Play around with each of these sliders to figure out what works best for you. I'm going to leave most of these set to 0%. I'll just pull the output sharpening strength back to around 75%. Now, similar to how we can mask our sharpening in Lightroom, you can adjust the sharpening of specific parts of your image in the selective sharpening section. You can manually add points or you can select color ranges. Zooming in on the background here, you can see some of the artifacts from the sharpener. I want to retain the smooth and blurry background and not sharpen it, so I'll just add a couple of control points. I'll click Add Control Point and click on any area in my background. If you click this little arrow, it will open up all of the sharpening options that correlate to our Creative Sharpening section on the right. All I'm going to adjust though is the size of our control point, which is the top slider, and then the next slider, which is our sharpening strength. I'm going to turn the strength down all the way. Hover over this black dot hold option, and then click and drag to duplicate that control point. Now up top in modes, I'll change the sharpened image to effect mask. The darker the area, the less it is affected by the sharpener. And the lighter the area, the more it is affected. So I want the background to be darker. You can leave this mask on as you add more control points. I'll add a control point over their faces, but this time I'll change the sharpening strength to 75%. Keep in mind, your control points will override the settings on the right. All right, now we have our subjects nice and sharpened, and the background is still smooth and blurry. We can hit save, and then back in Lightroom, we now have this icon over our TIFF, which basically tells us we've changed the metadata of the photo. Just click Import Settings from Disk to update it with our changes, and then you can export it as a JPEG. Now, if that seemed like a long process, no worries. You can easily automate overall sharpening by creating an action in Photoshop and running a batch automation to finish out your post-processing. You could also sharpen a JPEG without first exporting it as a TIFF, but each time you edit a JPEG, you deteriorate the quality, so we would not recommend it. Just be careful not to go overboard with it because you can easily make it look far worse than if you did no sharpening at all. Thanks for watching. At the end of this video, we're gonna show our very first Spotlight, which features a member of The Lab, which is the platform we launched last week, helping photographers take their photography to the next level.
slap that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. And we will see you next week.